Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we're looking at some highlights of the One Hive Genesis versus Bangladesh War. Bangladesh being the undefeated, I think one of two undefeated clans in CWO Invite coming into this war, and unfortunately for us, they remain that coming out of it. Um, we're going to take a look at some highlights, talk about um, how war has changed post update with the changes to Town Hall 12, um, the tornado trap, a few troop adjustments, um, how war is different. And then I'm also going to be making a Town Hall 10 specific video for you guys as well um, on an attack strategy that's really been crushing it at Town Hall 10. So uh, you can look forward to that coming out soon as well. Uh, but fortunately, I think part of the update, somewhere, it, it, this was slipped in somewhere. Uh, the replays last a lot longer for Friendly Wars. It's more than just 24 hours, which is nice for me. I don't have to try to record like as soon as the war ends. So that allowed me to get some good replays for this video. Um, we're just taking a look at some highlights, though. And I will, after this attack, I'll kind of show you guys how things ended up going down and how wars are probably going to look in CWR Invite for a while. Um, so anyway, this was a nice minor attack. I love the Sui Battle Blimp with uh, balloons in it. Um, that's just making the path a little more narrow for the miners. Otherwise, it's a pretty uh, sizable uh, width that they have to go through of the base. So by taking out that compartment, um, it makes the queen's job easier. She stays up longer. Right now, she just goes down. And it keeps those miners in more of a tighter path through the base, which is a key thing. And I'll talk about that in future videos, as you guys will see. Um, but has one final heal for the back end here. And um, there's the tornado trap. You can see uh, it doesn't really affect miners. It's kind of pulling, but nothing's happening. I guess the miners are planted in the ground is the idea. So... Um, they can't really be pulled because they're only like halfway sticking out, um, which really is a buff to miners for sure. Um, I guess by virtue of not being nerfed like everything else a little bit by the tornado trap. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. Let's take a look at how this war ended up going down. Uh, no triples on any 12s. This was the uh, a dip fail, unfortunately. Um, which cost us the star, but I think they had us on percentage. You can see we were using our 11s for the most part, one hit from a 12 there. Um, we are using our 11s to get that percentage. They were using their 12s mostly to get percentage, which typically is going to work out better. So what we're seeing now, uh, I think going forward, let me move on to this next uh, replay here. What we're going to see is probably not very many 12v12. So you might see one here or there, but now a 12v12 is really gonna be like winning the war, I feel like. Um, I'm, I can't speak, I haven't seen uh, some of the other wars, how they turned out. I assume the results were pretty similar, um, but it's gonna be like, if you can get that 12v12, just even one of them in these breakdowns with like four 12s, you are really gonna, that, that is huge, getting a 12v12. Um, but beyond that, if a clan can, free up four Town Hall 12 attacks, or how many, however many 12s there are, one Town Hall 12 attack for each of the opponent's 12s, and you can put up high percentage on all of them, like 80 plus percent, that's also going to be important because a lot of these wars might come down to uh, percentage because um, there's not going to be any 12v12 triples with that third Inferno um, and with a few other uh, smaller things that um, kind of were a, a, a nerf to Town Hall 12 attacking. So um, anyway, that new tornado trap here, um, I'm not sure where it was in this replay. I don't remember seeing it pop up. Maybe maybe you guys will catch it. I'll try to zoom in a little bit here. Um, it's not as powerful as I, I thought it would be. And um, we saw it doesn't really affect miners. But even against troops, it does affect uh, it. It has such a small radius that like one troop can trigger it that kind of wanders off. So really it's a lot about placing it in the right place. Might, part of that might just be getting lucky. Um, part of it, putting it somewhere where you anticipate like a lot of troops moving through, not just like one random archer that triggers it. So you got to really be careful because it has like a, it has the radius of like a, almost like a small bomb or something. Like it's a very small radius, surprisingly small. I would say less than a scaly trap. I don't have the exact numbers here, but um, you got to be careful with how you use it. 
and um, I haven't seen it really ruin any attacks. Um, of course, I'd say the most annoying thing it, that it does is the balloons, because with balloons, a lot of it's about speed moving through the base. So if you get a big group of balloons in it, that is uh, definitely going to make it difficult for the attacker. But at the same time, oftentimes a lava hound will trigger it, a uh, lava pup will trigger it, which is even more annoying. Um, and that that's not really going to hurt the attack very much. So um, I will perhaps make a video on exact placement of the tornado trap as we start to know more. Um, nice little tome at the end. This was a close one on time though. Uh, luckily the queen does a smart thing by shooting that wall so she can go all the way over, get that air defense which was ignored. Um, but yeah, I'll try to cover the tornado trap as we know more about it. But right now, not a huge deal at Town Hall 11 and 12, but it does make a difference. It makes attacks harder, I will say. Um, it definitely makes miners seem a little more powerful because they are not affected by it. Okay, um, a few Town Hall 10s here that I want to show. This one was a nice Lalo and just kind of a classic Sui Blimp, no, no kind of, no clone spells, no Electro Dragons, just uh, a nice uh, trade here for the Wizard Towers, the uh, two Wizard Towers, two Archer Towers, not even getting any Infernos, or actually maybe he does get the Infernos, okay that's, yeah, he uh, gets the left Inferno, that was huge value, we're talking two Wizards, two Archers, and an Inferno, that is a lot of value from a Haste and one Blimp, so the pathing worked out nicely, uh, whoever built this base should have thought about that. That's something you should always think about. And I would say you should almost always have a black mine opposite your town hall. I mean, why not? Because uh, unless there's just no value over there, you should be thinking Electron, Sui Blimp with Loons, some kind of uh, Battle Blimp coming through that side of your base. If you put a Seeking Air Mine that takes like three quarters of its health, it can make it deploy early. It can ruin an attack for sure. So I would always put one to two Seeking Air Mines over there. They don't do that much on the Hounds, honestly. Like, it helps, but um, I think the Seeking Air Mines are sometimes more powerful when they hit healers of, on Queen Walks, when they hit, like, a Funnel Baby Dragon, and when they hit the Battle Blimp and make it deploy early. But look at this pathing. He used the um, heroes on the opposite side, I think, and then the pathing is just perfect through the base. Um, so many balloons left up, a nice, like... Uh, relatively narrow uh, space for them to go through so that was cool um, has a ton of balloons left up at the end we will fast forward and we'll move on to two more 10 v 10s um, but anyway I this I the invite's been kind of weird with some of like these clans getting kicked out but uh, I believe this loss puts us to three and three which is it's, it's going to be kind of interesting how playoffs work out because you have these clans that because they um, were kicked out of the league, they have like a 0-11 record automatically, which I guess obviously takes them out of playoffs, but it artificially boosts the records of other clans. So just because they're out of it doesn't make it that much easier to get, qualify for the playoffs. Um, the bar is higher, I would say, in terms of win-loss in order to qualify because you have these clans that are uh, dishing out 11 free wins to whoever they were scheduled to uh, go against. So we, I think, get two free wins. I think it's like war... I don't Actually, I'm not even going to speak... I know if I say the name of the wrong clan that got kicked out, I'll be in big trouble with someone. So I'm not even going to say any clan names. But <laughs> um, I will say that I believe we are getting two free wins, which is definitely nice, but um, and one of those is already factored in because we faced a clan already uh, that is no longer in the league. So um, we are three and three because of that win, but we're definitely gonna have to pick it up and have a substantially winning record, I would say, to be safely in the playoffs. Um, but we still got a lot of clash left. We have, I think, five weeks to go, so we will double down here. A close war for sure against Bangladesh. Um, we, things looked really well at the beginning of the war for us, just couldn't quite give ourselves those 12 attempts. And I think, you know, might have had a shot at getting a 12v12 if we had a few more attempts, or even just getting higher percentage and putting us back in the race for percentage uh, to tie it up. And that, that's probably a huge theme we're going to see is percentage on the Town Hall 12s. I think 10v12 is pretty much gone. Because um, what's the point? You're not, 
are you scouting for a 12v12? Maybe, but 12v12s are a lot harder. Um, if you're going for two stars, maybe you can put up 50%, but that's not what you want. You want the 11s, preferably even the 12s hitting the 12s, whatever you can spare and still clear the 11s and 10s, which uh, to be fair, we did not do. We did not get that last um, 11, 11 taken down because of the dip fail. So, um, unfortunate. We have one more attack to take a look at here. 33, uh, this one, Neza. Nice hog attack. Um, like showing these because it still works and it we don't see it as much because it's it's something that is like it's not like a new attack. It's it's always been there as a good option. And as bases get kind of weird to defend all these other you know electron miners, um, this attack is becoming uh, more viable as the bases get a little more different. They're not explicitly set up to defend against uh, hog attacks as much anymore you might say um, one thing to pay close attention to that you may not have noticed at the very beginning of this attack he created the funnel on one side by bouncing doing a bowler bounce off a elixir collector and on to a dark elixir drill now that this is a little bit trivial maybe to some people but if you want to make funneling harder, you should no, no longer uh, line up your elixir and gold mines uh, with those dark elixir drills because typically in conventional base building, um, and this base kind of does it, you put the higher HP buildings on the inside when you have two layers of trash and you put the lower ones on the outside. This makes it so you can't bowler bounce to create a funnel because the bowler will not take out the inner building um, as it takes out the outer building. However, now because there's that new level of gold mines and elixir collectors, um, you can now do the bowler bounce off one of those collectors or gold mines and take out the dark elixir drill. So don't give free funnels, adjust your bases accordingly. Um, treat those collectors and drills as higher HP buildings um, because they now are roughly equal to a dark elixir drill. So keep that in mind because that can make or break an attack. In this case, the funnel up here was created by bouncing, I think right here off a elixir collector onto a dark elixir drill. There's also a hole in this base, which is kind of funny. Um, but you don't want to give away any free funnels um, when you have two layers of trash on the outside. So keep that in mind. But anyway, we'll fast forward, nice attack. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, a minor video coming out soon. Um, oh, I didn't say it was a minor video. Well, surprise, it's a Town Hall 10 minor video um, because it's been so popular, um, especially in this last war. So look forward to that, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bisectatron out.